I did some sketchbook painting from photos I took from a recent trip and I wanted to show you how I approach painting landscapes with gouache using a layered approach, starting from very basic layers and building the colour, the detail and depth as I go. I'm going to go through all my tips on creating gouache landscapes and my hope is that you can take some of these tips and apply them to your own reference photos. I'm going to be showing you my steps for painting these two landscapes and if you want to see my process for the wall of flowers painting, let me know. Today I'm using cyan, magenta and yellow as well as white and I'm mixing my own colours but I won't be going through colour mixing in this video in much depth. Um, I do have another video I'll link above here where I talk a bit more about colour mixing but if you want to paint along feel free to use whatever paints you have as the tips I'll be talking about won't be linked to colour mixing so it won't make a difference. Before we get started, I wanted to thank today's sponsor Skillshare. You may have heard me talk about how I want to make a living from my art and Skillshare is helping me with that as there are tons of artists and illustrators on the platform with really great classes on how to make a career from your art, the ins and outs of the business side, tips on finding your style or the type of work you want to do. One of my favourite classes I've taken to date is Omar Wynn's transition into illustration, breaking into the industry. She gives such a detailed breakdown of her own transition into her career as an illustrator and some really tangible steps that I can apply to my own journey. Thanks to this class, I started making Pinterest boards, exploring my ideal artistic life style and the type of art and illustrations I want to create. The first 1000 people to use my link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so please do join and give it a try and let me know what classes you recommend. So as I mentioned I use a very layered approach to gouache painting. I like to build my layers so I start off by painting a very thin watery background where I map out where the sky is, where the mid ground is and where the foreground is with three different colours. And these colours are loosely what I see in my references, but this layer is going to get pretty much fully covered, so it doesn't matter too much that these colours aren't perfect. I'm going to start with this reference photo I took while I was on a walk. So now that I have my rough guideline with a thin layer of paint, I start to map out where the shadows are. I look at my reference photo and I pick out everything that is in shadow and I put these shapes down. For shadows, I try to stay clear from black or grey and instead I'd like to use a dark blue and I like that effect. I think it helps the final result look more cohesive and the colours are a bit less muddy. Now to be able to push the background far back, you want to make sure that the subjects in the background are lighter in value. So using white can really help with that. And you also want things to appear less saturated and a bit more blue toned. So mixing in a touch of blue will also help with that. In my reference photo, you can see that the sunlight is really falling on those trees in the background, making it very light. And I'll add more of the lighter highlights as the paint dries later on. My paint consistency is a bit thicker than that first watery layer that I put down, but it's still not thick paint yet. It's that melted butter consistency and this is important with gouache, you want to layer from thin to thick so you don't disturb the layers below. Here I begin to add some of that grassy area that is also in shadow, but the shadows aren't as deep as the foreground so I'm going for a mid green. And you'll see that I jump around a lot and this is because when I do a section I then want it to completely dry before putting on more paint on top. So I move on to another section that's completely dry too. You'll see as I'm doing this little path that I begin to make my brush strokes even smaller on the areas in the foreground and that's another tip to keep in mind. The areas closest to you will contain more detail so I like to make my strokes small and these don't have to be perfect details, I still like that more looser effect but the small brush strokes will help give the illusion of lots of little pebbles. Now I begin to refine those shadows and I start to see that the foreground needs to be darker so I start adding darker paint and just more detailed shadows in general and I like to think of my process with gouache as a bit of a dance between me and the paint because as I go along I can see how things need to be modified or added to. It's also a journey with going through those ugly stages where you can't see how it's all going to come together but if you just kind of keep dancing with the paint something beautiful can emerge. Um, is that cheesy? Probably. But anyway, I, I, I like the process. 
I can also see that those background shadows in the trees furthest away are kind of too dark so I mix in some white and make those shadows lighter. So to be able to keep that nice depth to the painting you want to make sure that your shadows that are furthest away are lighter than the shadows close to you. So now that the foreground has dried, I'm layering on even darker shadows by stippling my brush and giving the form of leaves. And this is where you can begin to see how the layered approach starts to give depth and texture. Then with that same color, I started to add tiny details to the path to build the illusion of pebbles. And then I started with some of the lighter green leafy layers. And this is when I start to emerge from the ugly stage a bit because I start to see how the landscape is beginning to form. As the layers dry, I begin to add lighter green leaves and this range of leafy layers really helps those bushes feel like they have a lot of depth. Now that I feel like the main shapes and colours of the background is done, I can continue with the overhanging tree leaves and so I build that out with varying shades of green to avoid it looking like a monotone silhouette which can make it look quite flat. So I want to make sure I have more than two shades of dark green for this layer. I'm liking how this is looking but I feel like those trees in the background are missing some of those sunny bright highlights so I'm putting some really light yellow there where the sun is hitting them and I want to make sure that because it's in the background my strokes aren't so small as I'm not trying to add loads of detail. This is a bit hard to see as the painting is small generally so the point is that the foreground strokes are smaller than those in the background. Then I go back to the foreground to pick out a few of those leafy highlights to give that detailed illusion and I also add some tiny pebble highlights too. It took me about an hourish to complete this and I'm not sure if that's fast or slow to you but I think it's very relative. Um, I was really happy with the end result especially because the location has meaning to me. Okay, so the second reference was a screenshot from me filming a walk in the park and you may know how I feel about capturing sunlight and shadow if you've seen some of my previous videos. So when I saw this, I was super excited to paint those shadows of the trees contrasting with the bright sunlit grass. And so here I'm mapping out again the different areas of colours with a thinnish consistency paint and I didn't draw anything with pencil so this stage is kind of like doing that so I know where all the areas are roughly. Now I'm going in and adding the shadows with the initial layer of dark blue. I'll build on these shadows to get them darker but the trick is to have the variation of dark values even within the shadows as this helps add depth and if you observe shadows in real life they aren't just one colour and value. Now here I'm adding the tree and starting with the darkest colours I see, I'll then build on this just like I did with the bushes in my first landscape. And I make sure to move my brush in a way that adds the texture of the leaves, even if you won't see this first layer that much. And I also make sure to leave some sky poking through the leaves too. I really like that the camera is picking up the texture of the paint because it shows truthfully how it looks at this stage, which I know can be discouraging when you're getting started and you're seeing these layers build. When I first started with gouache, I felt very discouraged at seeing so much texture, but as you keep building, you'll see how it begins to come together. You just have to get used to the ugly stage more so that you trust that the process will see you through to a good result. I'm adding some of those background trees and to push them back I'm desaturating the green with a bit of white and a touch of red and blue and making sure the shadows are also lighter than the foreground shadows. Now I'm adding that second layer of darker ground shadow and I'm not completely covering up that first layer as I want it to poke through and give dimension. And the same goes for the tree as well. I'm adding more leaves with darker colors to start to see that depth build up.
Once that's dry, I'm going to go in with a light green and begin to pick out where the sun is hitting the leaves. And as I wait for the leaves to dry, I'm going to go back and add some more shadows and darken some of the existing ones even more. At this stage, I'm also adding the cute tiny bench and I love these little details. It can be tempting to leave them out as they're so small, but I think it adds to the landscape. I'm now moving to the foreground and beginning to add the texture of the grass blades, starting with the darker colours first for the blades in the shadows, then a variation of greens for the grass and the sunlight. These details will help create that depth in the whole landscape. Then I go back to the tree and begin adding some lighter highlights and I love this part because the tree is starting to gain a bit more dimension. I didn't know if I should paint the tree in the top left corner of the photo, but I ended up doing it just so the composition of this little study wasn't too simple. This tree had beautiful pink flowers and so once my layers were dry, I started to add them in. And for this kind of detail, you also want to make sure you have variations of the colour pink or whatever colour you're using to continue to add that depth, even though these flowers were super tiny. I made sure that the flowers that were in the shadow and not being hit by the sun were darker and then the ones that were in the sunlight had little white highlights as well. Then I just went in and did some final details like brightening up that path and giving it some texture, adding some shadows in the background and then just going over and adding some more of those bright highlights on the grass blades closer to us so that it really had that depth perception as well. So this is how they turned out and I'm really pleased with them. They definitely mean a lot because of the location and I had a lot of fun doing them as well and kind of getting back into landscapes with gouache. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.